Henry David Thoreau said that wildness is the preservation of the world. Today, we journey to the Dalisad's wilderness in Monongahela National Forest to seek out what it is about nature that many like Thoreau find captivating. We adventure in search of an answer to the question, what is lacking in our civilized lives that wilderness has to offer? With nearly a million acres of protected lands, Monongahela National Forest offers a variety of opportunities for camping and hiking. We will be hiking a total of about 10 miles through this West Virginian wilderness. Compared to a national park, organizing a backcountry expedition through a national forest might seem daunting. The websites aren't always as organized, and much fewer people have experience with them. But the reality is that with national forests come a refreshing sense of simplicity and freedom. All that is required to go backpacking here is your will to do it. There are no permits or fees required, and you can hike off the trails, camp almost anywhere, and start a fire so long as you leave no trace. The start of an adventure like this is always a magical time. It's when all the possibilities dance around in your head and all the new experiences yet to unfold are just a seedling in your mind. We would start out at the Bear Rocks Trailhead, hiking this eight mile loop over the course of two nights. Right from the start, the trailhead took us through a wide open field. This is the sort of epic landscape that we've dreamed about exploring for years. The setting sun spilled over the landscape, casting everything in an amber-golden glow. All the grasses and shrubs and trees were awash in the brilliance of the evening light. As we walked, we saw a variety of plants and flowers, including these blackberries, a few of which we indulged in. We 
continued up a wooded hill that emerged on a ridge top. As the sunlight receded, the sky glowed with subdued blue and pink hues, and the brisk air was filled with an open silence. The sun was now gone, and we continued hiking through the dark, stopping to check the map and eat a snack. So right now we're looking at it like this. So 526, we'll go down here. If we keep going, then we'll get to, five, I think we should just go on 522, what do you think? I mean, we could just, Depression. yeah. Doesn't look too enticing. <laughs> it's pretty tasty, actually. <laughs> here, have some. Surely. Last time we went camping, we were in the Smokies. We had almost no water. By the end of it, we had like five nuts left. <laughs> The nuts, after a while, your body's just like, yeah. You put another nut in there. <laughs> I'm gonna show you nuts. So. The stars came out one by one, and when we finally found a place to lie down, we saw the Milky Way, which compelled us to wonder, what do we miss out on when we spend our nights beneath the haze of the city lights? The stars help us to understand how small we are in this universe. They provide a perspective that lets us enjoy life without getting held up on all the small worries that often plague our mind. It was a nice and clear night, and since we only brought a tarp for shelter, we decided to lay it down on the ground and sleep on top. Mornings speak directly to the soul. Whether it's the dew in the grass or the sunlight filtered through the leaves, waking up in the midst of all this reopens your eyes and reawakens your spirit to a way of life that has long been subdued by our modern culture. In the morning, we pumped drinking water out from the stream, but that wasn't all nature provided to us. A nearby tree offers birch bark, which is a great fire starter, even when it's wet. And for breakfast, this wood ant's nest provides a protein-packed meal of larva. Though a more palatable option might be these blueberries. These are the sorts of mornings you want to have. No alarm clocks, no rush hour, cold water from the stream and fresh blueberries right by your bed. The quiet of the morning and the clarity of your mind allow you to fully appreciate your surroundings. Unlike the clear grasslands that we hiked through yesterday, the forest was full of life and chaos. Fallen logs, leaf litter, and detritus covered the ground. Yet unlike our landfills and trash heaps, all of this chaos has a purpose, with the forest constantly renewing itself.
We emerged at the foot of a grassy hill where the sunshine poured down onto us and wondered what lay just beyond the horizon. Our good camera broke down, so we waited at the top of the hill to see if the problem would alleviate itself. While we're waiting, uh, it's probably a good time to use the bathroom. And this moss is going to be my toilet paper. I'm a bit wary of using moss for toilet paper, since it is a fragile part of the ecosystem. But I've seen too many pieces of toilet paper strewn across wild places to keep using it. Instead of being left outside or in a landfill somewhere, this moss will biodegrade back into the environment around it. In this way, using the nature around you, although it may seem destructive, is ultimately better for the environment. You aren't using something that is made in a factory that will take a while to break down. And here's another offering of the wild. While I was out there I found these, which are sorrels. They actually taste like uh, apple peels. Nice tart and sweet. And there were also more blackberries. The trail continued on a flat stretch atop the small hill. There were just a couple of lonely, out-of-place trees, giving the feeling of a medieval pasture. Some of these grassy fields were created as the result of logging operations and fires. It's these large expanses that give the forest its name. The term sods actually originates from the local term for a mountaintop meadow or bog. As we continued along the hill, we took a small detour to check out and climb some of the gnarly trees. You know, whenever I climb trees, I uh, just feel this instant sort of soothing feeling, or this feeling of relief. Uh, I don't know, just being around nature, and especially being this intimate with it, seems to have an effect on your mind and your soul. In fact, scientific studies have shown that being in contact with trees is physically and psychologically beneficial. Just being near a tree can reduce stress, depression, and ADHD. Atop this plateau, we could see the landscape stretch for miles. Of the many places we visited, the Dali Sods Wilderness certainly ranks among the most beautiful. It was also amazingly diverse. We were constantly surprised at the feeling of the environment with each new area we reached. Growing up in the Midwest, most of the natural scenery consists of small wooded areas in the midst of suburbia. As kids, all the fantastic landscapes we saw in video games and movies created a longing inside of us for places just like this. Even without some epic quest to go on, the feeling is still the same. The hot sun was bearing down on us, and without much forest cover, we were completely exposed. Even though it was mid-September, this day felt like the middle of summer. Hiking in the heat and the sunlight can sap your energy and dehydrate you pretty quickly. Thank you.
We had reached our trail junction, but we were all out of water. We didn't see any sources where we could fill up, so we headed downhill to a heavily wooded area where we were most likely to find a stream. The forest is a beautiful and magical place. With all the incalculable benefits it provides us, it's no wonder that the forest has been the inspiration for countless stories, fairy tales, and legends. Fresh, clean water. There really is no better beverage. And it was back to our trail. As we mentioned before, one of our favorite aspects of the Dali Sods wilderness was the permission to hike anywhere. While this land was used as a training ground for soldiers for World War II, and there have been instances of live ordnance being found as recently as 2006, it's pretty unlikely to come across any. Hiking across the open sunny plains meant we were quickly using our water, so it was good to have full supplies. We stopped another moment to take in our surroundings before continuing on our way. When I've been hiking for a while, I, I sweat a lot and use a lot of energy. And that's usually when I am the hungriest and the thirstiest, is when I'm out in the backcountry. But it's not a bad feeling. It's something that I think is missing from our modern life. These days, some people struggle and starve constantly, while others suffer from having too much, from not understanding what a truly balanced and satisfying life is like. As we rested, it started raining, so we moved into the cover of a beech forest. Sometimes it seems like we've given ourselves so many more troubles in the quest to make things more convenient. Having a roof to avoid the rain involves getting an education, buying property, getting a job, and making payments. In nature, you begin to see just how convoluted and unnecessary so much of modern life is. The discomforts that you experience out here serve only to emphasize how breathtakingly wonderful life can be. Being hungry makes the food delicious and satisfying. Getting dirty cleanses your soul. And as much as we love the sun, rain brings life to the world. One thing that struck us about Dali Sods was the constantly changing landscapes. From deciduous woodland and big open plains, we hiked into thick pine forests. Past that, the trail took us into an open hillside. Sometimes it felt like we were in South America, other times the Scottish Highlands. To think that such a beautiful wilderness could be found in the eastern U.S. is incredible. If only more of the region was left untouched by man. It's funny because when I look at this type of environment, I see like this pristine nature and beauty. I don't have any desire to tear down the trees and build civilization. So I wonder the first people who came here, the first settlers that is, what were they thinking when they saw places like this? It's fortunate that places like this are still being preserved. Just imagining subdivisions of summer homes, highways, or strip mining operations scarring the landscape, as was a possibility several decades ago, is horrifying. 
Being able to experience this land, especially in modern times, is hugely rewarding. In fact, many European settlers felt the same way. They felt a strong desire to live as the Indians did, and whites who had been captured by Indians were reluctant to ever leave. Indian prisoners of whites, on the other hand, were happy to get back to their traditional way of life. We were breathtaking by every inch of land we saw. Hiking out in the wild is nourishing to the soul, but nature can also feed your body, including this edible lion's mane fungus. were my real life I'd probably take a nap and then just do whatever else I had to do to survive and it's funny that I had that thought that this isn't my real life and I think it's because in my daily life I do so many things that don't pertain to actual survival it's just things I have to do even if I don't want to do them or need to do them although many people think of hunter-gatherer tribes as having difficult and miserable lives Sociologists, anthropologists, and historians have found that they enjoy much more leisure time than we do in our modern world. In fact, some hunter-gathering people typically devote two and a half, six-hour days per week for work. When you consider the fact that many hunter-gatherers view their chores as an enjoyable activity, and not actual work, that figure becomes even more drastic. Out here, nature forces you to question whether all the modern conveniences we have in life are really worth it. It might take more effort to get a drink of water or to eat a bite of food, and the convenience of air conditioning or heating isn't available. But everything is more enjoyable and deeply satisfying. This might be where, this is definitely where we're camping. Sounds good to me. We got a fire ring right there. This is it. I think a big problem I have in my own life is that I'm always waiting for permission to be an adult. Yeah. And I feel like other people at just some point they either maybe they got permission from their parents or something or they just decided that they were going to be. But like my whole life I've always been waiting to be like okay, now I'm old enough to do this. I think part of that is like all the social judgment you get as a child and even beyond that. And I think what's nice about being out here is you come across so few people and there's no society to, to judge you. you yeah, at this point it. when you're out here, it's you were just, you're whoever you are right now. In most modern societies, children are raised rather paradoxically. They're often overlooked by parents who are busy or preoccupied, yet they are also coddled and overprotected. Punishments are used by authority figures to mold children. As a result, when it comes time to be independent, a lot of us in modern society feel rather unprepared. Many adolescents face major identity crises. In hunter-gathering societies, children are generally seen as autonomous individuals, allowed to experiment with knives and fire. At the same time, infants are constantly held by their mothers, and children are always ensured safety by their parents. These children, who are provided constant security, but also independence, grow up without any identity crisis or anxiety.
lot of times the problem people have with camping is they say it's too uncomfortable and I need a shower and I feel dirty. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about this a lot of, before, but like it's all about accepting it. Yeah, we were wading through that river full of mud. At, at the time it feels horrible, but we've got this fire going and we're settled down and it just, you gotta give in to the dirt. Being in nature is about truly letting go. It's about accepting discomfort and recognizing it as part of a satisfying life. It's about daring to get your feet in the mud, to taste the sweat drip from your brow, and embrace all facets of existence. It's only when you let go of the need to be clean and comfortable does your body relax and enjoy your surroundings and your connection to the earth. A world full of marketing often makes us think that we need to buy certain products for remarkably specific and mundane tasks. Certain pans and utensils for cooking, special gadgets for knowing when the food is cooked. If this were true, one would have to wonder how our species survived for so long in the past. For our flatbread here, this flat rock will do just fine. As the saying goes, only a fool needs a clock to tell him when he's hungry. Now that's what I call sharp cheddar. <laughs> Might not look like much. Well, this is delicious to me right now. Mmm. <laughs> I agree. This is good. I kind of like hiker's pizza. Like a bush taco. A simple camping pot or billy can is really useful though. Nothing like cooking up a hot batch of fluffy white rice. If you've never had it, pork wool is a delicious Chinese food made of dried strands of meat. It's fluffy, lightweight, non-perishable, and incredibly flavorful. Nightfall came, and that meant it was time to set up a shelter. To save space, I often forego bringing metal tent stakes, and instead choose to carve my own. The simple versatility of a tarp is beautiful. If you don't have any trees to tie it to, you can improvise with a hiking pole, a stick, or in this case, a camera tripod.
The night was rainy and wet, but our improvised tarp shelter was surprisingly helpful against the weather. We felt slightly soggy, but no worse for the wear. After crossing the river, there was no more avoiding it. Our feet were sore and soaked, and we continued on through the muddy marshland, embracing the grime and dirt rather than trying to avoid it. Although many of the meadows were created by logging, these bogs were formed naturally over thousands of years. Wetlands like these are incredibly beneficial to the environment, as they filter water and store carbon. We continued hiking and came across a faint trail leading to a beautiful and serene riverbank. The running water was outdone only by the lush grass and moss. We relished the cool water around our ankles, though the rocks were a bit slippery. As we went on, we could see the first hints of fall in the leaves. Like our trip, summer was coming to an end.
lot of people will say that we are merely romanticizing nature. They'll point out all the dangers and discomforts that they think the wilderness brings. But we believe that to romanticize nature is to represent it accurately. If anything, the footage you saw today has underrepresented the beauty of nature. Simply watching our video doesn't give you an understanding of the smell of the air, the taste of the water, and the feeling of the mud. It cannot make you truly understand how much we remember about ourselves as human beings while out in nature. But we still filmed this with the hope that you would be inspired to take on an adventure of your own. It's easy to forget how incredible and humbling the Milky Way is when we are surrounded by light pollution. It's easy to forget how fundamental fresh air and clean water are to life when the stench of smog and sewage runs rampant near our homes. It's hard to see what intrinsic value wild animals and trees have in life when we are surrounded by concrete and asphalt. In civilization, it is too easy to believe that there is nothing wondrous or meaningful in the world, that there is nothing divine. Only by journeying into the wild can you understand, as Thoreau did, why it is the key to the preservation of our world.